Good morning again. This morning I would like to take you on a journey of honesty. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25, Therefore each of you much must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we all are members of one body my topic for this morning is when an honest man meets the justifier when an honest man meets the justifier and honesty uh, doesn't need much definition uh, the dictionary uh, describes it as if you describe someone as honest, you mean that they are always tell the truth and do not try to deceive people or break the law. I know she's honest and reliable. The synonyms for honesty or being honest is trustworthy trustworthy, uh, upright, reliable, and there are other synonyms of the word honesty. Uh, she fought honestly for a just cause and for freedom. Uh, honestly, you, in the judiciary system, most of the time in a, a court case, this is what you know they want to reveal or the defendant or the prosecutor want to reveal the honesty in the case uh, and so honesty I don't want to say it is a rare commodity but in our society we see where people are of fighting for this in the place of business and how people function. Everyone wants everybody to deal with them in an honest way. It even chuckles me, a person who is not so upright <laughs> wants honesty when it confronts him, when he is doing a transaction. He doesn't want the other person to uh, deal with him in a dishonest way. Isn't it alarming that a person who is not so upright would want this form of attribute, would want this form of uh, character to be dealing with? Honesty um, can be elusive at times. So the fact of the matter is wherever we engage as people of God and even people in general. There is some form of uh, conflict. And so people want honesty. If it is in a community, if it is in your family, among your children, every one of us, wives and husbands, they want people, they want each other to be honest, to be transparent, and to be uh, open and so I want to there are some Bible characters I want you these are I from eyewitnesses account on on the matter um, of people meeting an honest man meeting the justifier <laughs> and how this man was so honest and his response to Jesus Christ 
The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5 through to 13. Matthew 8, 5 to 13. The Bible says, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now let me say, um, um, help us to, uh, I want to look on what is happening behind the text and why Jesus had to say what he said and the encounter that he had with the centurion. Now in Luke chapter 7, you will see a different account. It's not a contradiction. You will see where um, Luke said they, they were messengers. There were messengers who was the centurion sent to Jesus. But matter what matter is doing is doing a synopsis. It's, it's, it's an abbreviation. It, it is the, to the same person who is having the conversation with Jesus Christ. Though the centurion is using servants, he's, 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 he's the one that is having the conversation with whom? With Jesus Christ. So when this honest man this man who is a Roman official, this man who is not a Jew, but he is a Gentile, this man who understands the, 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 his condition before the Almighty God. You see, he was well learned because a, 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 a Gentile was not permitted to go into the house of a Jew. If he went and entered the house of a Jew, who was a, who is a Jew here? Jesus Christ. If he entered the house of a Jew, he would become what? Unclean. And so here he's saying, listen, I am not worthy to what? To come before you. But just say what you have to say and this man would be uh, cleansed. Now he points to the Gentiles, I'm sorry, he points to the Jews who were so honest when Jesus arrived on the scene. And he, geez, what Jesus is doing, he's doing a comparison. And he's saying, look at this man who has no affiliation with the Almighty God. Look at this man who understands the law and understands the ramification of going up into a Jew house and becoming an unclean person, being honest and trustworthy. He would rather have faith in God for God to heal him than breaking the what? The law. Isn't this a beautiful picture of how honest this, gem, this man is? Now let me say this. I'm going to expand on this a little bit to, for us to understand, for us to understand how humble this centurion man is. Now you need to understand that the Roman officials, they were the ones who were ruling the nation of Israel. They were the ones who were what? In charge. This Roman official could have marched up to Jesus Christ 
and even order him to allow his servant to be what? To say to be saved. <coughs> he set aside arrogance. He set aside <coughs> his limited power because he seems to recognize that Jesus' power is more than his own power. He he had he was an official in the Roman army. <coughs> he detailed he detailed how his day-to-day -day running work. He was saying, no, oh, Jesus, you have to understand my status. He explained everything to him. But this centurion man <coughs> laid down, laid down his own power. And he was subjected to the power of Jesus Christ in humility to the fact that he humbled himself and said God I Jesus Christ I am being honest I am not what worthy to come before you but say what the word and I believe and trust that this man my servant he will be what <coughs> he will be healed when an honest man meets the justifier you see honesty has no clothing honesty does not cover up anything Honesty is transparent. Honesty will lead you to salvation and allow the justifier to save your soul. Honesty goes a far way. Honesty doesn't need any help or any support system. You know when you tell a lie and then you have to tell another lie to back up that lie and you have to do another thing to you want to say, but honesty is plain, it's open. It doesn't need any support. It doesn't need anybody to defend it. And so Jesus Christ became a defender of the centurion man because of his what? Honesty. Because he was transparent and because he was humble and he was kind to his very servant that served him. Honesty, when it needs the justifier, the justifier will support that person's integrity, will support that person's character, will defend that man, and that uh, honesty will lead him to great salvation. Now, when I use the word, when an honest man meets the justifier, the honest man there is generic. I'm using it in a general one. term, meaning both male and female. And so there's another story. <clears throat> there's another story which is an historical fact because we have an eyewitness account in, book, in the book of John chapter 4 when Jesus met the woman at the what? at the well. <clears throat> you know, this woman was an honest woman. Regardless of how she was living and what she was what? Doing. She was an honest woman. And so the Bible declares unto us that Jesus and the woman of Samaria John uh, chapter 4 in John chapter 4. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisee had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And then as he passed through Samaria, he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field 
that Jacob had given to his son. You know the story. You, you know the story and how Jesus met this woman. And Jesus was speaking about the, 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 not the literal water, but the spiritual water that is going to give life to all of us. You and I that has been given life to us. And when he met this woman and they start to have a conversation. And the conversation run deep. And you know what is Jesus? He's just a, a master teacher. He didn't come out and start to condemn this woman and start to slander her and bring her before the council and try to uh, 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 beat her down some more. He's trying to give her life. He's trying to get her, uh, get her out of that system, that life that she's living in. Uh, that life that she's living is not one that is suitable for her. It's, it's not going to give her any advantage. And so Jesus and the woman from of Samaria, from the whale, had a conversation. And the conversation led to uh, um, her life being exposed. And when her life being exposed in the subtle way in which Jesus did it, uh, uh, you notice this woman, he didn't say, who are you to be judging me? That's not what she said. He, she, she didn't run this, um, the justifier out. Didn't run Jesus out off and said, Leave me alone. Why you come here prying into my business? That's not what she said. What she said is that I perceive that you are what? A prophet. This was an honest woman. And before the conversation ended, the Bible says that she ran into the village. She ran into the village proclaiming, owning up to what she has been doing. And calling people said, come see a man. The honesty of this woman drove her to repentance. The honesty of this woman allowed her to engage the justifier, the master, the honesty of this woman allow her to start following whom? Jesus Christ. Are you with me? And so honesty, honesty will unveil certain things, certain truths. When you are honest with yourself, when certain truths and certain things are revealed, to your lives and my lives will allow you to think and wonder, will allow you to make the correct and the right decisions. And so she left our water pot and went, declaring to the world, the village knew her. The village knew her lifestyle, the community knew who she was. But when she went, when she met the justifier, left him and went into the community, she was singing a different tune, a different song, a song of honesty. Oh, I met this man, and he told me everything that I used to do. Don't you think she would have to be articulating the things that she used to do? Are we having a conversation? What I'm, you understand what I'm saying? Don't you think that she had to be telling the villagers that, hey, I met this man and he told me that I, I've been with some men who are not my husband and the one that I'm currently with, he's not my husband. And she just went into the village declaring all of this that when she met Jesus Christ, all that came out of her mouth is honesty. When you meet Jesus Christ, your life is not the same. It is purity. It is honesty. And when you start to speak honest about your situation, you are not ashamed anymore because honesty, 
Honesty free you. Honesty liberates you from the captivity of sin. It liberates you and I. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's allowing us to be honest with ourselves. Honest on where we are at with him. Oh, if you understand the water that I'm about to give you, you will never thirst again. You will never thirst again. You will never thirst. You will never be in the condition that you are in again. You will never be uh, 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 ashamed again. You will be liberated. And so when this woman met Jesus, all she had to do, she, become, she became pure. She became honest. She became transparent. So whenever her accusers saw her, you know what they had to say? Who is this woman? This is what she used to do, and she's now telling the whole community about what she used to do. But guess what? She ain't doing that anymore. What has happened to her? What has happened to her? And so the last thing is, Let us, we look at an honest man, centurion. We look at an honest woman. Let us look at an honest crowd. In Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, this was God's kingdom coming into fruition. It was predicted in Mark 9 and verse 1. Some of you stand here. Will not they taste that until you see the kingdom of God comes with power? Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus Christ instruct the apostles that they should wait where? At Jerusalem where they are going to receive power from an eye. And so in Acts chapter 2 and verse 11, Peter stood up. And he started to preach. And he preached. And he preached. And in 36 he said, Let all the house of Israel therefore know, for this certain that God has made him, both Lord and Christ Jesus, of whom you crucified. Peter accused them that you have killed the Christ. Look how honest these people were, were. Now, verse 37, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Greatest question that has ever been asked, what shall we do to be saved? They were honest because of their honesty. Now, somebody accused them of killing the Christ. Accused them of how they humiliated the Savior, the justifier of this world. He's accusing them. Now, the crowd is much larger. It was on the day of Pentecost, the 50th day. It was much larger than each 12 what? Men and 120 disciples in the upper room. It was much larger. They would have said, who are you to be saying we have killed the Christ? Who are you? Why are you accusing us? They could have grabbed them and strung them out and beat them in the, in the public. But no, they were honest. They realize that yes, indeed, what Peter is saying is so. And because of their honesty, the Bible says about 3,000 souls were what? Saved. This morning, as I come to a close, I don't know where you lie in your life. 
And every day my honesty is challenged. My integrity is challenged. And I have to say, Lord, forgive me. Because I want to be honest before him. I want him to save my soul. On that day when the clouds appear, he coming down and the trump sound. I want to hear Jesus Christ say, well done, good and faithful servant. And so I don't know where you are. And, 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 and if you are in an honest place, and then I embark on you and tell you that those who are around us, that you teach them these life principles, saving skills. That we be honest with each other. That we will love. You no, know, there's something, you know, as I said, Christianity is a way of life. It is not an event. Church is not an organization, it's an organism built and bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you need to understand that every one of us are connected by His Holy Spirit. That we need to treat every single person favorably. For the Bible said, do good all to all men in Galatia, especially to the household of faith. And sometimes I see where we as Christians have failed God miserably because we are not honest. We treat Christianity as if it is an organization. It's a business. No, it's not a business. It's a spiritual entity. And we must function on the premise of love, agape, which is unconditional. And no matter what anybody has done, and they may have made some mistakes, and they have made many mistakes, and we will continue to do this, but we must function in the setting of how oh God Almighty function. How did Jesus Christ dealt with his apostles and disciples. It is okay that we leave, but we must leave in love. It is okay if anybody leaves that we pray for them. If they leave on a, on a, on a, on a notion of anger, we pray that, that that anger will become honesty and purity. But we must those who remain here operate on the premise of God's unconditional love. How many times should we forgive Lord in one day? Seventy times. Seven. Is there, was Jesus saying there is a total and how you must go? No. My second chance ran out a long time ago. He ran out. I'm on another chance. I'm on another chance. And we must operate by faith, church. We must operate. And in our lives, in our own lives, we must trust God. And we must pray for each other. Because this world is a tough world. And Satan is on our heels like a roaring lion. He wants to devour us. And we must be honest with this. And we do not fight against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers in high places. If you have not met Jesus, I hope that you are honest enough this morning. The Bible said in Mark 16 and verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. How oh, honest are you that when you meet the justifier, you will allow the justifier to reveal your honesty, to reveal transparency, transparency, to reveal salvation unto you, that you reveal and repent of your sins so that God can walk in your life and you'll be a shining, honest light to the world. If you have responded to the invitation, feel free to respond as we stand and sing song of invitation.